Coming to you live from the Republic of Texas, we have, by way of Skype, Daryl Pettit. Now, Daryl, when he's not up doing this kind of thing at night, is a, a realtor in the great state of Texas. There's a lot of land in Texas. A lot of land. And you're yeah, licensed to do business in all of it. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm a broker, and I do commercial and residential appraisals, and I've been doing this for 20 years. And now I'm in politics. I'm an activist in politics because we've got to do some things here. Well, I was in real estate for a while, and that's what I got as broker. And uh, so uh, I had to yeah. find another career. <laughs> <laughs> Active in politics, what started that? Um, real estate. You know, I, I uh, had 55 agents. My wife had a mortgage company. And um, and then I had like three or four appraisers working under me. And you know, then uh, the market crashed. And it kind of pulled the rug out from not just us, but, you know, people around the country. And, and then, uh, so I started digging into what the reasons were for the crash. And, uh, then I just started after that, I'd, I'd write it on Facebook, get my frustrations out and keep myself calm. And then, um, uh, so I, I, I started getting quite a few followers, uh, that were interested in what I had to say. Hmm. And you found yourself uh, during now, now there was a election cycle prior to this one for presidential stuff. Uh, where did you find yourself four years ago? Four years ago, I voted for Romney, mm -hmm. and now it comes around, and we got our little fanny handed to us. And yeah. uh, how's it going to be different this time around? You know, there's uh, a lot. I, th I think a lot more people uh, they wake up, they they woke up, and. Um, you know, I, we've got some. You know, we've got one good candidate as far as I see. Uh, we've got other candidates, but you know, like they're saying on the news, we've got the establishment lane. We've got Ted Cruz, and then we have Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of excitement. Uh, a lot of people are trying to uh, uh, make a difference and make a change this time around, and and uh, a lot more people are more aware of what the establishment uh, has done to us, what the media has done to us all these years, and they're uh, trying to make a change now. It seems like, you know, with the election of, uh, I mean, not election, but with um, <clears throat> Donald Trump winning the last three elections, people are, are angry, but they're not really um, trying to figure out what, what the what the best situ what the best solution for their anger they they're becoming more emotional i think it seems to me i, I certainly agree that that we, what i'm seeing more than anything else and it's really hard to handicap and and prognosticate this because there's things that make me shake my head but one thing i'm pretty certain of the voters are angry yeah no they are angry and i they, think that cruz has marked marketed himself and branded himself well uh as an outsider of the establishment but sometimes i find myself saying gosh if he wasn't a senator he probably would be in the lead well if, if the media wasn't giving donald trump free airtime like eight out of the 24 hours of the day i think he'd be in the lead but <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump is just getting so much exposure, so so much free publicity that uh, he's choking everybody else out. And uh, and then the other thing is there are a lot of things that that he and Rubio are saying about Ted Cruz that just aren't true. But they don't care what the truth is; they just want to muddy the waters. And I mean, for example, how many times now has Donald Trump said that Cruz is not eligible, and he thinks he's going to sue him? Okay, where's the lawsuit? Where's the lawsuit? He's not. He's not going to sue Cruz. He's just. He's just. Uh, like I said, muddy in the waters. Mm -hmm. Well, and and it seems that um, you know the what what attracted me to Cruz uh, is is the things that that are really not part of the campaign. Uh, Ted Cruz, first of all, is a very principled Christian man. Okay? Exactly. Now, is he a messiah? No. Nobody is. We had one 2,000 years ago, and they crucified him. But I do know this. 
he will stand up and stand against the establishment in in the party at 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 great personal law or great political loss for him personally not um, not just not just po- uh political loss but but financial loss because Ted Cruz is a brilliant attorney um he's argued before the Supreme Court nine times and won mm-hmm. and you know he always says on the campaign trail that you know we have to do this for our our kids and grandkids and i i really truly believe that his motivation is is just for that because as a brilliant attorney he could easily start his own business own law firm uh or be hired by a number of people and make you know, millions of dollars. Personal injury lawyers, so good ones can make up to a hundred million dollars a year. They all seem so, to be in Houston. You ever notice that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch those ads, yo. Law firm in Houston. They must have some interesting laws there uh, so, or lack well, thereof. Yeah, well, uh, Houston is still, a, a, you know, you've got a lot of uh, uh, oil companies there. Uh, there's the Refineries down down by uh, the bay, so you have in quite a few injuries in Houston. Uh, well, not, I, well, I won't say quite a few, but you know. The, well, what I admire uh, about Ted is is he has the courage to stand on his principles, even in the face, you know, of the opportunity for compromise. Uh, when when he went to Iowa, he opposed the ethanol subsidy. Now that's right. a good way to get yourself on the wrong side of Iowans, <laughs> mm-hmm. but, but the, but he stuck to his principles and that's what, that's what really appeals to me about Ted Cruz is, uh, that I could trust him, uh, to stand on the constitution, even if it's unpopular, even if he stands alone, that's the kind of man I'm looking for. That's a leader. And, uh, it is a leader. you know, it, it's easy to sit to, to sooth say uh, and just say that tickle the ears of whatever audience but in in today's world uh, you, you can't get away with that and we don't need that kind of um, you know disingenuous uh, politician uh, I think mm-hmm. he realizes uh, one that we're in a mess but two he has <laughs> he has a message of optimism and hope that we can pull this off Reagan came into a very similar, situation uh and yeah. and he's been the underdog Cruz has and he's fought back because he's not a quitter and at the end of the day uh if you believe in your principles and you believe you're right it's just a matter of getting those that agree with you to get together and win i often have made the point uh daryl um that we we don't really need to spend a lot of our time persuading and recruiting others we already mm-hmm. have enough to win we need to get together and act as a team. And I think that Ted Cruz can do that. Yeah, I think he can definitely unite uh, the party. But again, it, you know, you've still got Rubio and, and Donald Trump over there um, just waging a, a battle against him and online and doing everything they else they, they can. They, they, they're saying anything about Ted. It things that just aren't true. Well, I think I think Ted is not a stranger to that position, and mm-hmm. I think he's not a stranger to being uh, thought of as having no chance. And he he soldiered on, and he never lost hope. He never lost his vision. And uh, I think it. I think that the field is ripe. I think it's about time for a game changer because the the ebb and flow of the campaign cycle and the political process, folks, you can't inhale forever. Okay, you got to exhale sooner or later. And uh, as a football coach, I mean, there's times when, you know, the other team gets an interception. Well, the game's not over. Yeah, that's very true. And you say, well, the momentum change. We'll change it back. That's very (laughs) true. Change it back. It can change back as easily as it changed. So, um, you know, there's times when we need a three-yard run up in the middle. There's times when we need an interception. So I think the time is about right for, for Ted to get a break. And, uh, uh, and I think he's so. better positioned today to take advantage of that. You know, he's he's uh, had to do some house cleaning, and I think he acted uh, appropriately, fairly, and even compassionately. I agree uh, he, with he, he he could have well made uh, Rick Tyler a scapegoat 
and thrown Rick under the bus, but he didn't. You no. know, he just stated the facts that he had to ask for. He could have said, I fired him. You know, I mean, what would what would Trump have said? You're fired. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, no, Ted asked for his resignation, you know, and he didn't show any disrespect uh, for the contributions that, that were made. But I think he just, mm-hmm. need, you know, he had to do some house cleaning. And, and again, he's standing on principles. And when it's time to make a tough decision, when the when the spotlight is on you and you have to ask for the resignation of one of your, you know, your inner core, Ted's got the courage to do that and do it in a in a manner that's that's forthright and respectable. You're a real estate broker, you said. You're responsible mm-hmm. for the for the actions of every agent that works under your license. Now, do you know everything that they do? No. You when don't the heat know. comes all, on, though, who's the heat this. coming on? Oh, and me, of course. Yeah, definitely me. <laughs> and, and the only thing that you can do is uh, try to give your team, you know, the best training and also let them know what your, your principles and values are. I mean, for example, I, I hired a trainer for my agents. And... Um, you know, he had come from the car industry and had been in real estate um, maybe five years or so. But he was trying to uh, tell my agents to do things the way that I didn't see um, as being principled. And, uh, you know, I, I would tell my agents and then I told him uh, to train them to be professional first, to uh, to not they're not salesmen. I, you know, I told them, I said, hey, I've got, I've got friends that are attorneys. They're on TV. They want to, you know, sure, they want to they get your business. But when you walk in that attorney's door, you know, you, you're a client and he's a professional. He's an attorney. He's not a salesman at, at that time. He's not trying to, to get your business on a TV commercial. He puts on his hat that says, I, you are my client and I'm here to represent you professionally. And so I, you know, I wanted him to train my agents the same way. We're, we're professionals, we're not salesmen. We're salesmen only in the sense that you know, we want to get your business, but when you get in the, biz- in, in the door, you know, we have a, respo- a professional responsibility to represent you the best way possible. And, and that, you're right, Ted does live that way. Ted well, is and, good- and Ted is familiar with the, the legal concept of fiduciary. And yeah. uh, I'm not sure about Texas, but here in Florida, realtors have a fiduciary legal binding, you know, to their client. And mm-hmm. that is a very high, high legal standard. That's right. Now, there's something that I wanted to bring up that nobody's talking about. And, and the, it wasn't the last debate, but it was a couple of debates ago. Um, Trump was asked, you know, if, if you become president, are you going to put your business holdings in the blind trust, and he said, "Oh no, my my kids are going to manage." And that's not a blind trust, and it's it's not really. Um, I don't know. It, it just seems to me like it's a conflict of interest. And I know he has vast holdings, and it would be very complex. But if it, if I remember correctly, every other president has put their investments or their businesses into a blind trust so that there's no uh, appearance of conflict of interest. You know, you you bring up a good point, uh, Daryl, very cogent, and it kind of went right past me. Uh, But when you think about it, uh, how how do you separate a man such as him, whose, whose entire life is enveloped in the business world, and you have to, you know, give him credit uh, for being a successful businessman, um, sure. how, how do you just turn that off and say, "Well, I'm not, I'm not the CEO of the United States. I'm the president, uh, right. with equal equal power with Congress and the court." Um, and he keeps talking about making deals. Well, I don't, I don't read the Constitution and the checks and balances as a deal making arrangement. Uh, I think it's it's one where each has a defined role. And there's accountability uh, involved, and I haven't heard a lot of that. So, uh, if anybody knows the checks and balances, uh, it would be Ted Cruz because he has argued for them at the highest level 
at the Supreme Court. He has uh, represented uh, Texas as a senator uh, mm -hmm. and, and, done, and done the state very proud. Um, gee, uh, you know, <laughs> Texas could lose a good senator here, you know. What are y'all going to do? Uh, we'll, we'll find another one. <laughs> Y'all got a bunch of them, don't you? Well, yeah, we, I'd, <laughs> rather, I'd rather have Ted Cruz as president than as, as a senator from Texas, even though we'll miss him. Yeah, he would be missed. Well, Daryl, listen, you're making a big difference out there, and, and what it's going to take, in my opinion, uh, is, is people like you, people like me, and people like the PJNet team. Uh, mm -hmm. If we unite together and get on the same sheet of music, uh, Ted Cruz has the qualifications. He has the principles and the character. He has the vision and he has the leadership. Um, he's not deficient in any area. No. And, and, um, and, and he's he got had, some good competitors, but none, and, and, none like him. Right. And a lot of people say, well, we need a, a business person. Um, Ted Cruz was a senator. He had no business experience, et cetera, et cetera. But if you look at Ted's tax plans and uh, you know it's one of the best out there um, I have a finance degree I, I have a finance undergrad and then and an economics minor and I know that uh, I started a trade war with or, or tax mm -hmm. you know some kind of tariff war with China mm -hmm. is not the way to go about doing it and that's what Donald Trump continuously talks about China 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 you know we already have a poor economy, and if you start a trade war with China or Mexico, it's only going to hurt the citizens here who are looking for the most affordable products. And, and there are other ways to bring jobs back to America, and that's not one of them. You know, I had that conversation earlier privately with someone because, you know, he says he's going to, uh, Trump says he's going to make Mexico pay for it. Well, I. Uh, I, I guess that's going to involve tariffing all Mexican goods. Well, uh, that will certainly uh, hurt Mexico, but it will certainly hurt a lot of uh, people that sell Cuervo. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't take away my Or that Cuervo. buy Cuervo. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, some, the unintended uh, consequences and collateral damage of tariff wars uh, – you know, it's one of those things. You shoot yourself in the foot or cut your nose off to spite your face. And Yeah, you don't do a blanket, you know, tariff on, on a, every product, which is what he sounds like. Again, he, he's not giving specifics, but mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't tax the whole, you know, entire country and every product that comes out of there. Uh, if you have, you know, if you want to tweak certain industries, you can do that. But And, and the other thing is you... You can't tell a company that they can't move somewhere. A president can, you know, maybe you can put a little pressure or make suggestions, but, you know, it sounds like Donald Trump is going to, you know, go to the CEO and, and the board of the directors and say, hey, you can't do that. Well, somewhere that, between just never being heard. a bully and a thug and having a beer, con uh, a beer summit <laughs> is reason. <laughs> and um, I, 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 I'm a little skeptical and a little bit fearful of being mm -hmm. uh, being too forceful in, in dealing with with uh you know but confidence is a good thing so no one has ever accused uh, trump of lacking confidence and uh, yeah, we'll see right. if he could pull off yeah. um now on twitter you are um uh daryl d-a-r-r-y-l pettit p-e-t-i-t-t and I also have a website that's called Conservative Junction. Conservative and, uh, Junction. I, yeah, I want to call upon good. our mutual friend, Terry G. Wright, uh, to post that in our chat room for those that are still with us. I mean, here it is, almost midnight on the East Coast, and we've got a significant team of people. We've been going at it all night. And what amazes me, uh, when you talk about enthusiasm and dedication and, and just the strength, um, I was talking to a pastor today. Uh, he, he invited me to join him for lunch. And uh, I said, you got to understand, we, we kind of start, you know, at 7 o'clock, and we don't end until midnight. I said, what if you got up there and preached for five hours? How many people would still be with you at the end of that? <laughs> and, and there is so much energy and so much passion uh, <clears throat> here. 
you know, in the cruise it, crew. Um, it, 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 I, it's very impressive. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to point out one other thing. Uh, you know, the next president, I would like to have a, a commander-in-chief that doesn't solely rely on his own um, skills even or or thinking, but, you know, we'll, we'll ask God before he wakes up, mm -hmm. you know, Please guide me and, and make and help me make the right decisions today. Because the you know the presidents are responsible for putting our military men in harm's way, well, men and women in the harm's way. And so I'd like to have, see somebody that or, or that I at least ha have a comfort level of that this guy is going to go out there and and not just depend on his own thoughts and and uh, what he wants to do, but will ask God for guidance before he makes decisions. And I, I don't see that in a lot of uh, the current candidates. I do see it in Ted Cruz. I know I, see, I see it very strongly. And, um, yeah. and I, and I concur Daryl because, um, our, our most cunning of plans are foolishness to God and, right. and God knows, see, God knows something we don't know the future. <laughs> so, so who would be yeah. best able to give you counsel on how to proceed. Right. If you only knew how things were going to turn out, you'd act differently. So, George Washington was was a great leader, but he didn't mind getting down on one knee and asking for guidance. You bet. Well, Daryl, it's been great having you tonight, and I'm I'm glad that you you hooked up with us, and we're we're just glad to to welcome you to the cruise crew, and we're glad to Thank to you. know that you're out there fighting alongside us, and and uh, we're we're going full steam ahead. And with with your help and our help and and literally millions of patriots and citizens and evangelicals, and I'd partners. like to I'd like to thank you, Mark, for putting all this together because it's people like you that's going to make a difference. Well, I I just do my job, and uh, <laughs> God gets the job done. So, Daryl, listen, Great. have have a good night. Thank you again for joining uh, us. Hope to hope to see you again sometime. 